So I'm Lori Marsh. Uh, my dad was John Whitty. He um, lived at White Pine for you know, a little over three years. My mom died about 10 years before he was at White Pine. And up until then, she did everything for him. And so he had to learn to do all of the stuff on his own, but he did great. Anyway, he had a fall. We moved him to White Pine. It was a really hard move, but a really good move. We were still struggling with uh, um, assisted living versus memory care. And he was kind of on the border and we decided to do the memory care. When we would go there, it would feel like home. They would welcome you, they would talk to you, they would ask you how you're doing. Um, I remember many days where I would have a bad day because dad was having a bad day and I would, and they would come up and just give you a hug. And um, I so appreciated that because I just think they met not only dad's needs, but they met the family's needs. And um, that was so appreciated, so appreciated. The nurse uh, was concerned about the difficult parts of Ann's care. She was very reactive and resistant to uh, the physical aspects of dressing and undressing, toileting, uh, uh, brushing teeth, whatever. She uh, was, uh, her, in her dementia, she was very reactive. She didn't know, what are you doing when they just wanted to put a garment over her? And, uh, so the nurse basically started talking to me, uh, uh, in, in, inferring but using the term nursing home. And then as the conversation was wrapping up, she said, you know, I think Comforts of Home Memory Care could take care of Ann. Why don't you talk to them? So my daughter immediately got on her phone, she gave the number and we said, are you available? And both um, Jesse and Mindy uh, were there and said, come on down. So we made a beeline and um, went down the hall with them, two daughters, me, and I laid it out. Uh, what and how and functioned and and the problem the pieces that were problematical and I'll never forget this. <laughs> Mindy, who, Mindy was standing here and uh, Jesse was over here. I think something like that. And Mindy said, "We deal with that all the time." And so we had one staff in particular, and I don't know if I can name names, but Juanita was absolutely fabulous. And she, <laughs> she would chase him down and she would make him take his shower. And at first it, you know, he was like, ah, oh, I hate to shower. But then it got to be where he was, he actually would say to me, he couldn't remember her name, of course, but he would say, um, that person, she's just, she's just so nice to me and she's so good and she would just, um, I know she would just take me for my shower and she'd get my clothes and she'd do whatever I want and she's just so nice to me and it was like, oh, you know, even though he couldn't name that person. Um, yeah, she and I mean there's many, many, many staff there, but she was one that just kind of stood out that um, she would just gently, you know, and smiley, always smiling, come on we need to do this and she could have just said you know we're not gonna you know whatever but she just was so good about it the door opens and out comes Mindy and Jesse and I knew who they were because we met of course and as I opened the, the car door they were there and immediately came and helped her get out of the car which is not an easy thing she's completely ambulatory and mobile, but uh, she doesn't know how to arrange her body and so on, so she needs help getting in, getting out. One on each side, I remember the picture in my mind vividly, walking up and uh, through the door. So, so I literally, she was escorted in and then I disappeared for upwards of an hour. 
while we went through the stack of paperwork. For the first time in our marriage, uh, we're now permanently separated. So it's a big deal. But the, the wonder of how she uh, blended in to the environment there, even knowing that she would have these resistant moments, which by the way, are always followed with her smiling and telling the caregiver that uh, I love you, uh, giving them a hug. In other words, she recovers from all this resistance because she doesn't know what they're trying to do. Just like that, when it's all done, they really love her. Again, the people there were oh, amazing, amazing. Um, just there when you needed them, but yet kind of kept their, you know, if you didn't need them, they were like, okay, go to, you know, spend your time together or whatever. They were really, really, really good at that. So I appreciated that. I'm sitting with Ann at the dinner table in memory care. My late afternoon visits with Ann sometimes meld into dinner time, and I am always welcomed when I ask to join her for dinner. Around the table are an array of wheelchairs, some of them massive, and walkers of all varieties. One of the sweet and lovely caregivers, Rebecca, is seated at the corner of the table so she can put food in Bob's mouth. Lately, I've been pondering the notion of what is universally referred to as memory care. How do you care for something that is slowly being taken apart and destroyed in the memory corner of a brain? I get Rebecca's attention. You know, you are doing sacred work here. I said, you are taking care of souls. This is God's work. Her face lit up with a big smile. She said, thank you, that makes me feel good. And I reaffirmed my thought. We can't really care for the memory that is progressively lost to the person who has Alzheimer's or some other form of dementia. We care for that person's physical needs, of course, but when memory fades, some aspect of normal human functioning goes with it, especially the human connections that rest in shared memories. What never goes away, however, is the soul of that person, of each person. That is what we must honor, respect, and care for, regardless of what little is left in the way of a response. 